Hey everybody, Adam Wilber here. Welcome back to the channel. As always, we don't monetize these, so if you do want to support what we're doing, please head over to vulpinecreations.com, sign up for our newsletter, and support us there. That's all the advertising we'll do. Let's dive into today's video. Today's video is a little different. It's not so much about how to be a better performer or entertainer, but how would you create and sell a magic trick to the magic community? Now, the reason I'm bringing this topic up is because it's something I get asked a lot. And a friend of mine just asked me if I could do a video on it. That's why we're here. So about 10 years ago, when I first started creating magic, it was a lot more challenging to get an idea onto the market. And today you can sit there with an iPhone, film yourself, build your own website, and pretty much have an effect on the market within a day. That doesn't mean it's the best way to do that. So what I'm going to go over are some tips, tricks, and a little bit of advice that I can give you on how you can get a trick of yours to the market, but in the most effective and trouble-free way, okay? So first and foremost, what do you need to get a trick to the market? You need to have done your research to know that this is actually a new enough trick that it deserves its place on the magic market. A lot of times, back when I was working for Illusionist, people would send us things that they thought were original, but they just weren't. They were way too similar or identical to something that had been out on the market before. And that becomes very frustrating. If you're working at a magic company and your job is to look at a bunch of material, if somebody sends you a bunch of stuff that's just regurgitation of old things, you're gonna stop paying attention to what they send you, okay? So the first thing you need to do is your research. Find out, is this truly something that's unique enough to be put out onto the magic market? And I have a general rule of thumb that I follow that my good friend Lloyd Barnes said to me many years ago and it stuck. There are three things that you can change in a magic trick, right? There are the props, there's the presentation or the routine, and the method, right? So those are the main things in a magic trick that we're going to be addressing the props, presentation, and method. If you change at least two of those three items, I believe that it's different enough to be its own routine or project. So let me give you an example. Let's say we're talking about uh, what's a good trick that's just come out recently. Um, well, let's use one of Volpine's tricks, for example. We'll use in case of emergency. In case of emergency is my signed card to impossible location. And there's a bunch of other signed cards to impossible locations that have been on the market before. So why did I think it was justified to put this out? Well, let's look at it from those three topics, props, presentation, and method. The props are completely different, right? The prop that I introduced is a little uh, emergency alarm, which isn't like any other prop, Oops, excuse me there which is not like any other prop on the market that utilizes this same trick or this same routine. The presentation. The presentation is also drastically different than anything else on the market. Uh, my good friend David Regal has something sort of similar, but it's just aesthetically similar. The presentation is actually quite different. And then there's the method. And the method that we use for in case of emergency is unlike any other method out there. There is one other routine that uses somewhat of a similar method, but it's drastically different, at least enough so that we're more than comfortable putting it out. So if you've got something you've invented, the best thing you can do is do your research, call some friends, call some knowledgeable people, get online, go to askalexander.com, and make sure that this is different enough to merit a place on the magic market. So let's say you've checked all those boxes. This is a unique and different routine, something that you are putting out and it's the first time the magic market will have seen it. How do you go about pitching this to a magic company? Well, let's not put the cart before the horse. You have to ask yourself, do you want to put this out as an independent artist on your own or do you wanna go through a big company? Let's say you're gonna put this out on your own. You've got a website, you've got a couple hundred people on your email list and you wanna send them an email and say, hey, I've got a new product, would you like to buy it? That's great, but the reality is you need a pretty big following for that to be successful. And what I mean by successful is that it sells a lot of units, right? Let's say it sells at least 500 to 1,000 units. It's a pretty successful magic trick. If you don't have a large enough following, it's gonna be very hard for you to sell this on your own. Even if you do a lot of Facebook marketing and target marketing, it's still a pretty challenging thing to find 
a group of magicians that will buy into your product. On the other hand, if you want to go to a magic company, let's say you want to bring it to Murphy's Magic or you want to go to Penguin with it, there are ways that you can do that and they will have a massive email list of people who have already purchased from them before. So if they get their newsletter and it says, hey, Adam Wilbur just invented a new trick and here it is, they're much more likely to purchase that than if you're selling it on your own. What are the downsides of that? Well, the downsides is you won't get as much money, right? The general rule of thumb is if you've got something completed, you've got the trailer, you've got the tutorial, you've got the props, and it's all packaged ready to go, you're looking at about a 50 to 40% take. That means if this item sells for $100, the magic company you go to, they'll take $60 of that and that'll leave you with 40. Now, not all magic companies are the same, but it's usually right around there. See, if a magic company has to buy the product from you, use their marketing arm to sell it and their distribution arm to send it out to people, that's very expensive for them. So while it may seem crazy, they're taking 60 out of that $100. In reality, they're not making anywhere near that much. They're making penny on the dollar, okay? So if you go to a magic company, you can pretty much know that it's gonna be represented to the best of their ability. Their entire email list will know it exists and they'll do everything in their effort to sell as many as possible. You won't take as much money as if you do this on your own, okay? So if you're able to sell 10 units on your own, at $100, that's $1,000 in your pocket. Whereas if you went to Murphy's and they sold 1,000 units, but you only got 40 of that, well, that's $40,000, so you can do the math, right? Is that right? Yeah, so you can do the math, right? That's the point being, going to a magic dealer or a shop, if you will, is going to eliminate some of your actual end income, but in turn, you're probably going to sell a lot more, okay? So my recommendation really, unless you have a big following, is go to a trusted company like Murphy's or Penguin or someone like that. You could also hit us up at Volpine Creations. I will say we're very picky about the content that we put on the site, but if it's something truly amazing, we'd love to have that conversation with you as well. At Volpine, we're a 50-50 split. The artist takes 50%, we take 50%, okay? Now, how do you pitch something, right? How do you, what's the best chance of getting something noticed by one of these big magic companies. It's very simple. How would you want to be presented something? More than likely, you'd like someone to email you with a short, succinct video showing what the routine is, okay? We don't need to see 15 minutes of explanation on why you think it's a good trick. At the end of the day, the people who are vetting these tricks are professionals. They've done this a lot. So all they wanna see is the effect. Right? No edits, nothing cheesy. Just put a camera on and do the routine. Now, if it doesn't fool them, that's okay. Right? When I worked at Illusionist, most of the tricks that got submitted didn't fool us. That wasn't the point. The point was, is this good magic? Is this practical? And is this something that we could manufacture and then put to the market? Right? So just film a video of you performing it, whether that's to camera or better yet, to a spectator. Put up your iPhone, do one wide shot so the entire thing is in, in uh, view, and film the whole routine. Then do a short, and let me stress that, a short explanation of the method. It should, you should be able to give the method in two minutes or less. Don't worry about the big companies stealing your idea and putting it out for themselves. That just doesn't happen. In my almost 10 years in this industry, I have never seen somebody say, hey, I pitched this to Illusionist and they stole my idea. Or I pitched this to Murphy's and they took my idea and left me high and dry. It just doesn't happen. So film a video of you performing it. Film a short and precise explanation. This is the method. This is how it works. And that's that. Thank them for their time. Leave your contact information. If you don't hear anything in about a week to 10 days, simply follow up. Hey, I reached out, I sent this in, just verifying that you guys got it. And that's the easiest and best way to get a trick to the market, okay? So if you've got something that you think is great, do your research, make sure it's different and unique enough to be on the market, film it, film a short explanation of it, and then pick the company that you feel would best represent you. Now let's say you just have an idea, but it's not fleshed out. You need somebody to help with prototyping, and filming a trailer and things of that nature. That's a little trickier because that's a lot of effort for a company to go through. 
So if you've got something that's really brilliant, really, really brilliant, and it's just an idea, then draw that up, right? Draw a sketch of it. Make a video outlining what this is, how it would work, and what it would need to make come to fruition. And then pitch the same idea to some magic companies. Now, if it's a very challenging thing that's going to cost a lot of money, that's just a decent idea, they're not going to get back to you. If it's a great idea that you've articulated well, then companies will understand, hey, we could put that together. We've got the production capability. We've got the marketing capability. Let's do it. So I'm not saying don't pitch an idea if it's not fully fleshed out. I'm just saying make sure that when you're explaining it to the company, that it's very easy for them to understand how this could be made. One thing I would not suggest to do is to say, hey, I have an idea where you hold your hand and electricity starts shooting out of your hand. That would be so cool. Yes, that would be so cool. What's the method? And if you're hoping that they'll give you a method or they'll brainstorm it and work out a method, that's not the way it works. I've had a lot of people come to me with ideas like that. Wouldn't it be great if we could do this, that, and the other? Yes, that would be amazing. And then they expect me to go research and develop this thing, put it together, and then put their name on it. That's not how this works, right? A lot of manufacturing magic is in the research and development. So if you've got something you want to get to market, you've got to do the work. Get a prototype made however you can. Whatever it takes for you to get that prototype made so you can film a video, that's your best best and fastest way to get a project to the market, okay? So I hope that helped. Um, you know, bringing out magic is a fun and exhilarating thing. You know, when other people perform your magic, it's truly awesome. Somebody reaches out and says, hey, I just performed uh, what, where, when, why wallet, and it killed, I loved it. It's such a great feeling. But what's a terrible feeling is putting something out where you haven't done your research and then having half of the magic community look down on you or talk trash about you because you're basically stealing someone else's work, even though it may have been an accident, okay? If you're going to put something out, road test it, make sure it works the way you want it to. And by all means, don't put something out just to make money. This is not the community to be in if you want to get rich because making magic and selling magic to magicians, it's not a quick way to make a buck. It's very hard to make good money doing that as just a creator. That's why almost all the creators I know who are good do something else, whether it's a full-time performer or they have a full-time job. So keep that in mind. If you're thinking of creating magic to make money, it's probably the wrong motivation to be creating magic. In fact, I can tell you for sure it's the wrong motivation to be creating magic. On the other hand, if you're a creative performer and you just want other people to be able to uh, perform your routines because you're getting such awesome reactions from it, then you're in the right place, right? Then build out your prototype, make a video, and pitch it to some trusted magic companies. I hope that helps. Create what you can, but just don't force things to market because it'll end up biting you in the butt. If your first couple releases are pretty crap, then you've made a pretty harsh name for yourself and it's going to be hard to to get past that. On the other hand, if you really take your time and your first couple releases are dynamite and they're really, really fun to perform and they get great reactions and they're made well and they're fairly priced, then you're setting yourself up to give yourself a name in a community that for the next 10, 20, 30 years, you can lean on. Every time you have another great idea, you put it together, you do it right, and you put it to the market and people will say, hey, it's another Cody Fisher thing. I buy everything he puts out. Or hey, Craig, Craig Petty has another routine out. Everything I've bought from him has been great. And that's really where you want to set yourself up to be. So I hope that helps. As always, thanks so much for your time being here. We'll see you on the next one.